back to the set of integers. What are they and how can we represent them with set notation? So the set containing all whole numbers, 0 and their negatives. So the integers look like minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, 0, positive. And the dot, dot, dot again just means continuing on with the same pattern in both directions for forever. So what does it mean to be a consecutive integer? Consecutive just in general means one right after the other or right next to each other. So some consecutive integers would be like 16, 17, 18, or even negative, minus 32, minus 31, minus 30. They're all right next to each other. So these guys are consecutive. These ones are consecutive. Consecutive, consecutive. Heck. So if I want to represent these in a generic form, what is it going to look like? Represented in form what? So if I let my first number be x, it's some unknown. It's generic. I can plug in anything I want. I could plug in 16. How do I represent the next consecutive number in terms of x? x plus 1. The next consecutive to this guy would be what? In terms of x. x plus 2, and so on. Same story would be here. If I had minus 32 as x, if I add 1, I'm next door, consecutive. If I add 2, I have a consecutive to the consecutive one. Okay, so it just means right next to each other, consecutive. Now what about if they're even? So the next even number next to 16 is 18. The one next to 18, 20. Or again, we could start with a negative. Negative 32, the next even one is minus 30, minus 28 is next to minus 30. So how would we represent that form? Represented in the form. So again, generic. If I let x be my first even integer, the next consecutive even one is going to be represented by what in terms of x? x plus 2. The one next to that, in terms of what we started with, x plus 4. Same story again works here. So odds works pretty similar. Let's say I start with 21. The next consecutive odd, the next odd on the list is 23. Next to that one, 25. Same story for negatives. Okay, so how do we represent those with a generic form? represented in the form x, x plus what? 2 again. Next consecutive in terms of the original, x plus 4. Okay. So the even and the odd representations are exactly the same for those generic um, starting values, but consecutive integers just in general, one next to each other. So keep that in mind. You need to know that term, consecutive. So turn in the page. Two consecutive limited edition prints are at a garage sale. They come from a 150 limited edition print. The sum of the two numbers is 217. We want to figure out, find the numbers of the prints. Okay. So what do we know? They're consecutive and the sum of those two is 217. So if I let x be the first number, the first limited edition print, first number, the second number is going to be represented by what expression in terms of x? Next to it, one higher is the second number. And I know if I'm adding the first number, and the second number together, it equals 217. So if I add x and x plus 1, those two numbers together give me 217. Now, do the parentheses matter on this part? No, there's a 1 out on the front, so we can drop those parentheses. And combine our like terms. So I have 2x plus 1 is 217. So if I'm solving for x, I need to move the 1 first. 
subtract 1 from both sides, divide by 2. So x is 108. So if the first number is 108, since we let x be the first number, then right next door is 109. So the first number is 108. Second is 109. If you weren't sure, how could you check? What could you do? Check and make sure. Are they consecutive? Are they right next to each other? Yes. And if I add them together, does it really give me 217? And it does. Okay. So you need to know that term consecutive and be able to represent the next consecutive even or the next consecutive odd. So the next one we'll do this setup together. Once we have that, I'm going to set you loose to solve the problem. So the perimeter of a lacrosse field is 420 yards. The length of the field is 60 yards longer than the width. We want to find the dimensions of the field. All right, so here's my rectangular lac lacrosse field. Disproportional, but that's okay. And I have a width, width, length, and length. So what does it mean to be the perimeter of something? It's on the outside. So adding up all the sides is my perimeter. So if I add up L plus L plus W plus W, that gives me my perimeter. But we can rewrite this a little bit better. Got two L's, two W's. Two times the length plus two times the width gives me the perimeter. And we know how much the perimeter of this thing is. 420. So I'm going to plug that in. Okay. So we have an equation here, but it's in two variables. So I can't solve it yet. We need another piece of information. So the other piece. The length of the field is. So L is equal to what? 60 yards longer, so 60 yards longer, adding to the width of the field. So the length of the field is 60 yards longer than the width. Okay. So I can rewrite L in terms of W, since I know L is equivalent to this. I'm going to plug it in and substitute. So 2 times what I know L is equal to plus 2 times the width gives me 420. So now that everything is in terms of W, one variable, we can solve. So take that, turn it into a try. Solve, give me the dimensions of the field. So to get rid of the parentheses, what did you have to do? Distribute in. So I'm looking at 120 plus 2W plus another 2W is 420. We can combine our like terms all together. I've got four factors of W. Subtract in 120 from both sides will give me 4W is 300. And dividing by 4, we get that W is equal to what? 300 divided by 4 is 75. Okay. Oh, too high. 75, what are our units in this problem? What were we talking about? I haven't written them anywhere, so we've got to look back at the problem. Yards, everything is in terms of yards. So W is 75 yards. But we were asked to find the dimensions. We also want the length. And I know the length in relationship to the width. So length is 60 plus 75 yards which is what? 135. So to sum it up, the cross field is 75 by 135 yards. And if you weren't sure if you were correct, how could you check? Plug in those numbers, the length and width, back into the perimeter equation and make sure that it's actually true. Last problem. I'm planning to sell my house. 
I want to be left with $117,000 after paying 7% of the selling price to my realtor as a commission. So how much should I sell my house for so that I'm actually left with what I want after I pay off the realtor? So what is our unknown? What are we trying to solve for? I want to figure out the selling price for my house. So I'm going to assign a variable to my unknown. I'm going to let x be the selling price. Okay. How much am I paying for commission? I'm paying the realtor 7% of the selling price. So 7% of x looks like what in regards for commission? So 7% Whenever we're dealing with an equation, it has to be as a decimal. So 7% of x is how much I'm paying for commission. So my leftover money at the end is going to consist of what? However much I'm selling it for, selling price, and I need to subtract off what I'm paying my realtor for. So how much I'm selling it for, how much I need to pay for commission, is what I have left over that I'm walking away with. So we have each of those pieces. Let's just plug in uh, the values. So the selling price, it's unknown. We let it represent, be represented by x. The commission was 0.07% of that selling price. And left over, in the end, I want to be left with $117,000. So everything is in terms of one variable again. So 1 minus 0 0.07, we're left with 93% of the selling price. You could look at it that way as well. If I'm paying 7% out of the 100%, then I'm left with 93%. You could have also set it up like that. Okay. So if we do the division... X is going to be equal to 1, 2, 5, 8, 0, 6, 4 to 5. And what are our units on X? So we let X be the selling price. So our units in this case are moolahs. So what does that mean? I should sell my house for around $126,000. So after I'm paying commission to my realtor, I make out with around $117,000. So we want to sum it up. I should sell my house for for $125,806.45. All right, nice job. Draw a picture if you can, if it's helpful, and assign variables to your unknown so you can work with equations. Those are the keys to solving application problems.